Hey, what's going on? My friend, Chris here from x Online. I have a good one for you today. I'm going to show you how you can train yourself to hear compression. Welcome and thank you for watching. We are going to dive into compression today. It's going to be a very cool one. But first, if you're new here on the channel, feel free to subscribe to the channel to click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. And for all of you, share and like this video if you think that the video is helpful. You can also download the Fundamentals of Compression Mini Guide for free. I'm gonna leave the link right on top and down below. Now, let's talk about compression. Compression is something that can be very difficult for us to understand and for us to uh, to listen to and to hear and to notice what compression is. It's not like EQ. EQ is pretty much straightforward, but compression can be very tricky. So I'm gonna share with you a very cool tip, something that you can do on your own as an exercise to train yourself to hear compression. So the first step to understand what compression sounds like is to understand the concept of the sound envelope. Now the sound envelope represents the varying level of a sound wave over time. And that breaks down into four areas, the attack, the decay, the sustain, and the release. Now I'm not talking about compression parameters, I'm talking about the sound envelope. So if we look at the attack of the envelope of a sound, this is the first initial part of the sound itself. It's where the sound reaches its maximum level. The decay is gonna be the drop in amplitude of a sound over time from the highest peak point until reaching the sustain level. Then the sustain is the period of time during which the sound will resonate before it starts to fade out. And then we get to the release, which is basically the time of that fade out or the final reduction in amplitude of a sound over time. So this is the envelope of a sound or the sound envelope. And it's very important to understand that concept of the sound envelope because every time you're going to work with a compressor, it will affect the sound envelope of the signal you're adding compression on. So now let's jump in Cubase and look at the FabFilter Pro C2 that I'm going to use. That is a compressor um, that is visually very appealing and very easy to follow. So that's why I'm gonna be using this one for this video. We're gonna focus on three parameters of this compressor, the threshold, the attack, and the release. Now the attack and release are two very important parameters found on the compressor, and that will affect the sound envelope of the signal you're compressing. And we're gonna focus on those parameters to start our training, okay, to train ourselves to hear compression. Once you have that figured out, it's gonna be way easier for you to hear compression and to determine which type of compression you're gonna need to compress your sound. You'll be able to determine how much attack and release you're gonna need to compress your sound, depending on the sound you're working on by doing only that exercise that I'm gonna show you right away. So first, we're gonna set up a threshold because we want to have compression. And to have compression, we need to set up a threshold point. So uh, when the signal goes past the threshold, the compressor is gonna start working. It's gonna start compressing. Um, now I'm gonna work on a snare drum, okay? So this is basically what we are gonna do today. Working on that snare drum is gonna be easier to, um, to hear what compression sounds like on uh, using a snare drum. Uh, now, I'm gonna overdo things, and this is the number one rule when you wanna train yourself to hear compression, or if you wanna train yourself to, uh, to hear all sorts of effects, you need to overdo it, and this is the only way you'll be able to hear what compression sounds like. Now, this is not a video tutorial on how to mix a snare drum at all, it's only about hearing compression. So that's why I'm gonna overdo things. So let's start by having a quick listen of that snare drum and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just um, tweak the threshold value to make sure we have some compression going on.
Okay, now I'm getting like 15 dBs of gain reduction. That's going to be good for the exercise. Okay, now let's start with the attack time. Now, the attack time is basically the amount of time it takes for a signal to get fully compressed once the, the threshold has been reached. Now, if we have a quick listen to a fast attack to see how that sounds like, this is what we are going to get if we overdo it on a snare drum. So things to remember with a fast attack, you get a bit more control, you get a smoother sound, a darker tone also. And on a full mix, a sound can, um, can sound a bit more distant also with a faster attack. It's gonna sound more processed also. So if you're looking for a more processed kind of effect, a faster attack will do the trick. But a fast attack can also suck the life out of your sound. So it's always a matter of balance. Now let's try this out with a slower attack. Okay, so I'm gonna bring the attack to, uh, let's go with uh, 40 milliseconds, which is very slow for an attack time on a snare. So let's have a quick listen to how that sounds like. Okay, we initially had way less gain reduction. That's because we're letting uh, a lot of the initial transients through in a way, and that's why we have a bit less gain reduction. So I just uh, brought my threshold lower just a bit, and also we're, ge we're getting a bit more impact out of that sound. But on the other hand, we have less control. So um, if you're working with an, uh, an uneven dynamic sound, um, that might be a problem. If your attack is a bit too slow, you'll have a bit less control. So it's always a matter of balance depending on what you are compressing. So this is what you have to look for with a fast attack and a slow attack. Now let's work on the release. Now the release is the opposite of the attack. It's basically the time it takes for the compressor to recover uh, once a uh, sound has been compressed. So this is the release time. Now I'm gonna bring down my attack to 10 milliseconds and I'm gonna focus on the release time only. So let's bring the release time uh, very slow to 320 milliseconds and let's have a listen. Okay, now let's go with the fast, super fast release, 10 milliseconds. Let's go with a 30 millisecond release time. So what we get with a fast release is a bit more excitement. It sounds louder also. It's a bit more aggressive. And we, we have that sense of urgency. Uh, too fast of an attack, though, can produce distortion. So this is something you need to pay attention to. A slower release will have more control on the sound. Uh, it will even the sound out also. It's going to sound smoother. But on the other hand, if you have a too slow of a release time, that can also suck up the life of your sound. So again, it's a matter of balance and it also depends on the tempo of the song. It depends on the type of instrument you're compressing. Those are the main parameters to start with to be able to hear compression, the attack and the release time. Once you're used to hearing that effect, what the attack and release does to your sound, you can jump on the ratio try with a 2 to 1 ratio, a 10 to 1 ratio, 6 to 1, 8 to 1, 4 to 1, and so on. Once you're used to that effect, then you can try with different types of knee. A soft knee, a hard knee, a medium knee, that also has a very nice effect on compression. Once you're used to, to all those different parameters and settings, you can try with a lower gain reduction. Start by using a snare drum like I did in this video. A snare is a very high transient type of sound, which makes it a bit easier to hear compression. And try to, to pay attention to what the compressor does to the sound envelope of your signal with a fast release, what that fast release is gonna do to the initial attack of your sound. 
what the release time is going to do to the sustain of your sound also. Uh, on top of the snare, you can try that on a kick drum, a bass guitar, a drum bus, which is also very good, uh, a vocal, of course, um, the mix bus, you know, a piano, guitars, and so on. So uh, repeat that exercise on a lot of different types of sounds. And I'm telling you, if you do this on a regular basis, you'll get way better at hearing compression and hearing the effect of compression, which is gonna end up giving you the ability to make better judgment calls during mixing. So there you go, my friends. This is gonna be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, share and like, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're new here. Again, I have my free guide on compression available for you to download for free. The link is down below. All right, my friends, take care, and I'm gonna see you next time. Bye.